Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing with you 10 health foods or what people think are health foods that you should be avoiding. I've made some of these videos in the past and you guys really like them. So I'm gonna just combine a lot of foods into one video and go over exactly why each food is not considered healthy. If you guys are wondering about other foods, put them in the comments below and I can either make a video on them or answer those for you as well. All right, so the first food is processed vegan cheese. I've made a video on this before, and this is one of the number one things to avoid. On my protocols with my clients, I always require that they go dairy-free, and always the next step is then to just start using vegan cheeses, but that's not the answer, as most vegan cheese contains canola oil and all kinds of heavily inflammatory and processed ingredients. The only vegan cheese that I would say is like a great option would be um, something like nuts for cheese, which is just cashew um, and some other simple ingredients. But most vegan cheeses out there are processed and inflammatory and should be avoided as they will wreak havoc on your gut. Number two are sugar alcohols. So you see a lot of keto recipes and sugar-free recipes or products containing things like erythritol um, or monk fruit. Um, and these are considered to be healthy. While it's great that there's no sugar in it, the problem with sugar alcohols is that they still have the same effects of sugar. So they heavily damage the liver because the sugar alcohol itself is really burdening on our liver, so it creates a lot of liver inflammation. Also, they can cause you to gain weight because um, they will just be converted directly into fat um, in the body. That's kind of how the liver handles that. And at the end of the day, they are very inflammatory for the gut as well. So sugar alcohols should be avoided. Now, once in a while, I'll consume, um, you know, like Lily's chocolate, which has a little bit of erythritol in it, but it's once in a while, it's not all the time. I highly recommend limiting these. I actually, you know, have a lot of keto bakeries in my area. And when I try to eat anything from these bakeries, I get severe abdominal cramping, always from the erythritol and so do my clients. So I always recommend cutting out any sugar alcohols. They are not a healthy option. If you are looking to use something as a sweetener, your best bet is pure green leaf stevia. Number three, this is a common one. This is kombucha. A lot of people consume kombucha. I am going to be honest and say I used to drink it a lot back in the day when I just started my health journey and I thought it was very beneficial, but we now know, you know, through the years that kombucha is not a health drink. It is so high in sugar and so high in yeast that when you consume it, it adds to the yeast overgrowth in the body. And the problem is that it also contains the sugar to feed the yeast. So you're drinking this beverage, building up your yeast overgrowth with also the, the sugar to feed it. So it's really inflammatory for the gut. And at the end of the day, it's not really giving you any health benefits. You can get a lot of the fermented benefits by doing a shot of apple cider vinegar. And if it's too sour for you, you could add a little bit of a liquid stevia to the apple cider vinegar with some water to dilute it a little, but definitely better option than consuming kombucha. Number four is wheatgrass. I've talked about this as well in a video, but wheatgrass is not a healthy health food. Um, wheatgrass does a few things. One, it's hard to absorb the nutrition from it and break it down. But more importantly, you cannot make wheatgrass or barley grass or anything like that certified gluten-free. Um, even if companies will say it is gluten-free, they cannot guarantee that. And um, as a result, if you are celiac, you have a chance of getting a, a flare-up from consuming wheatgrass. But again, at the end of the day, it provides zero nutritional value and is very hard on our body to actually break down and absorb. You're much better off consuming something like a chlorella, a spirulina, or you know, a broccoli powder or something like that. Number five are your typical plant-based milks. Not that plant-based milks are unhealthy, but that the standard ones on the market like Silk and Earth's Own and all these brands contain so many gums and thickeners, which are really, really inflammatory for the gut. They contain a lot of phosphates and things like that as well. Something like an Elmhurst milk or greenhouse juices are phenomenal because they're two ingredients. It's the nut and the water and you know they're really simple and don't contain anything that can irritate the gut lining. So those would be a good option. But standard plant-based milks in the grocery store, I would say don't consume. They do contain a lot of things that will keep your gut inflamed and do the opposite of what we're trying to do with our health. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, number six is gluten-free bread. So this is something as well that 
it doesn't apply to every single brand on the market, okay? But the typical gluten-free breads you'll find in your grocery store freezer contain a lot of modified cellulose and cornstarch and canola oils and yeast extracts and all kinds of inflammatory ingredients, again, that are going to increase our inflammation, really damage our gut lining, feed pathogens, and affect our cells and our DNA because of all the modified ingredients in there that our body does not recognize. So ditch those breads and either make your own or find a brand that has simple, clean ingredients that you can trust. Number seven is agave. I also made a video on this. I feel like more and more people are coming on to the fact that this is not a healthy health food. Um, you know, as time goes on and research is coming out, but this is again something I wanted to put here in stress because I know a lot of companies include it in their ingredient list and a lot of people think it's healthy. To me, it's almost the equivalent of high fructose corn syrup. Agave is so high in fructose, it really damages and burdens the liver. Remember guys, that fructose is not processed by our cells and turned into energy, it is processed by the liver and stored as fat. And if our liver is processing so much fructose, it is getting burdened. So ditching out agave and use, using something else in place. Again, my favorite is like a, a, a pure green leaf stevia, which is not only sugar-free, but is actually nourishing for the body and has antiviral properties. Don't use processed stevia, just use the real green leaf. Um, but yeah, agave is a, a high fructose sweetener. Now honey, maple syrup, these are high fructose as well, but nowhere near as much as agave, so you could substitute for that as well. Okay, number eight, vegan butter. This stuff is toxic. It contains seed oils like canola. It's hydrogenated. It's, to me, the equivalent of a margarine. It is not healthy. I have not personally come across a clean vegan butter. If you have, please leave it in the comments down below for our followers here um, so that other people can try it out. But what I have seen, there's no clean vegan butters, at least in my area. You don't want seed oils. They will inflame your body, inflame your cells, you know, surge your autoimmune and, and trigger the leaky gut and everything else. There's no benefits to vegan butter. You either can consume like a coconut oil or some other healthy fat or have even real butter, like a real grass fed ghee, that would be a much better option. But if you cannot tolerate any dairy, definitely don't go to vegan butter. Use a coconut oil or something else, even if that means kind of giving up some of your favorite flavors that come from butter. Number nine, rice protein powders. So most vegan protein powders contain rice. Rice is super high in arsenic and most protein powders are not, you know, checking the, the heavy metal um, or arsenic levels in their product. So they're sourcing rice, even if it's organic, um, it, it can contain a little, really high levels of arsenic and they're just processing it and creating it into a protein powder. So rice usually contains a lot of toxins and heavy metals, but on top of that, if you're having a rice protein powder, it's actually very inflammatory for the gut in, uh, as well. My recommendation would be something like a New Zest protein powder, which is pure pea protein. It's smooth, it's creamy. They've been tested for heavy metals. It's amazing. It's lectin free or a hemp protein powder like the Evo Hemp uh, products as well. So those are my recommendations if you are to use a, uh, a vegan protein. Be very careful with the protein brands you're using because they also will make a lot of claims when they actually have nothing to back them up as well. So if you're not sure if the protein you're using is clean, reach out to the brand and ask for their uh, documents on third party testing for heavy metals and things. And if they can't provide that, they most likely have not done the work. Number 10 and our final one is fruit juices. A lot of people think that having, you know, like a blueberry juice or something like that, an orange juice is boosting you with vitamin C and antioxidants. And while yes, it is on one end, the other end, it is so high in sugar. It is spiking your blood sugar through the roof, creating blood sugar imbalances, feeding pathogens. And the problem with fruit juices, even if you're just having a little bit, is that they are they, they don't contain the fiber so you're taking the fruit that you would be eating which is paired with a lot of fiber to slow the breakdown of the sugar and therefore not spike your blood sugar as much you're having just the juice without the fiber so it's spiking your blood sugar but of course as we know it's high in fructose and therefore burdening the liver creating a lot of liver inflammation and then again help making you gain weight and doing all things you know things like that so Fruit juices should not be consumed, even if it's just a little bit. If you want the juice of a fruit, eat the fruit whole and enjoy it in this whole form as nature intended. Um, so you're getting, again, the fibers and things to help break it down and therefore are going to minimize the effects that the fructose has on your body.
All right, those are the top 10 foods. Again, if you want me to do videos on other foods, if you're not sure about them, please put them down in the comments and I can do more videos like this. Um, I hope that you guys have a beautiful day. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at Holistic Homeopath. It's in the description box below for tons more tips like this um, and a lot more content. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.